The South Carolina Adventure Route, also known as the SCAR, loops through approximately 1,100 miles of rural South Carolina. It includes mountains, oceans, forests, countryside, state parks, historical sites, and quaint towns, all on a mix of pavement, sand, mud, dirt, and gravel. The SCAR also connects to the Smoky Mountains 500, the Georgia Traverse, and the Trans-American Trail. In fact, those who have traveled the SCAR refer to it as a mini Trans-American Trail because it offers such a diverse range of scenery and driving conditions. I'm Matt Brody, and along with my brother Beef, we're going to be tackling the SCAR in a series of overland adventures. Overlanding is new for both of us. We're still learning, still growing, still testing our rigs and our capabilities. We felt a pull to get out and see parts of our own backyard that are seldom thought about and who even fewer travel through. We've heard a call to explore that we can no longer ignore, and we simply must go. This is our story, our adventure. We begin our loop of the SCAR just south of McCormick, South Carolina, in a small section of the Sumter National Forest. Our rigs for this trip are very different. I'm traveling in my mostly stock 1992 Jeep Wrangler YJ Jurassic Park replica with a tiny camper company trailer and rooftop tent. My brother Beeve is in a 1994 Land Cruiser FJ80. Arguably, these are two of the 90s most iconic 4x4s, but two very different approaches to overlanding. Both have their pros and cons. The YJ is small, light, and has excellent breakover angles. Solid front and rear axles help it glide over most obstacles, but its lack of ground clearance, open differentials, and the fact that its 2.5 liter engine is towing a trailer means that any large obstacles or steep climbs we find along the trail could present a serious challenge. Not to mention turning around with a trailer can be very problematic on tight trails. The Land Cruiser, on the other hand, has a lift kit and larger 33-inch tires. It has front and rear lockers, as well as a locking transfer case. Its big V8 gives a ton of power and torque in low range, but it's a big vehicle and it's a little top heavy with the rooftop tent and awning. Low hanging branches and less than ideal fuel economy could become an issue as we get deeper into the trails and further away from civilization. It isn't long before gravel roads turn into dirt and the occasional mud puddles. As we start taking in the beauty of the forest, we begin noticing that the beauty is inching in closer and closer until, well, it's literally encompassing us. Our first real test. Pushing through is our only real option. The SCAR offers a treasure of sights you'll never see traveling main highways or even country roads, like this old wood and steel bridge. The weight of the Land Cruiser worries us a little bit, but the bridge does feel solid enough. Uh, so we came across this really cool old bridge. We're getting some photos of the Land Cruiser on it and stuff, but when you actually look at the bridge, Beeves down there and from that angle looking underneath, this bridge is, is sketchy. It looks really sketchy. It's like super rusty and just like coming apart. But I mean, it's just, it, it really is suspended from up there. And the Land Cruiser ain't light. All right, so I couldn't resist getting shots of the Jeep on the bridge either. So anyway, but yeah, check out. That's, <laughs> that's a super sketchy bridge. Anyway, but it's been a lot of fun so far. We are having a blast on this trail. As great as it is, we have to keep moving. The day is getting away from us. By now it's late afternoon and we haven't even stopped to eat lunch. 
we're up a little past the McCormick area now and we've stopped for lunch here at this beautiful, I think it's a lake. I'll have to figure out what it's called and I'll put it right here when I do. But uh, it's a gorgeous spot. We are all, all by ourselves here. We're gonna set up, make a quick lunch and then get back on the road because we're, we're honestly a little behind schedule at this point. All of the, the stopping to film and things like that have kind of taken a toll on our schedule. So we're gonna to have to kind of come up with our plans for how far we're gonna to try to get tonight and what that's gonna look like. But uh, it's been gorgeous and so much fun so far. We've mapped out goals for how far we need to get each night, but more and more it's looking like those goals might be too ambitious, too optimistic, and it could leave us searching for a campsite well into the night, assuming that we're able to find a campsite at all. All right, so it's um, it's about five o'clock, and I think we've made the strategic decision to find camp sooner rather than later because the next group of campsites that uh, that we know about uh, is about an hour away, and that's going to put us right up against sunset. And uh, I think we're just going to have a better time and enjoy ourselves more if we're not rushed and trying to do everything in the dark. So I think we're going to find a campsite uh, closer to where we are here and just try to get out earlier in the morning to make up the ground that we missed today. With the hard decision made to stop early while there's still light, we find a forestry campsite nearby and make camp. All right, so it's been a long day. It is right about 5.30. We made it to a campsite uh, and you can see it doesn't really look like it on camera yet, but it's starting to get dark because we're in the woods. Um, this is a forestry campsite so it's not dispersed necessarily but it's pretty secluded there's a couple people around but I will have some privacy but uh, now it's time to go ahead and get the rooftop tent set up so we can start making some dinner so the rooftop tent that I have is the Raptor series from off-grid it came with my uh, my tiny camping trailer which by the way has been awesome so I'm super pumped about it but the thing I really like about this tent is that it is super simple to set up and like one person can do it without any issues whatsoever. And that's it. It's set up. That simple. It's so easy. Yeah. It's not huge. It's not like the most spacious tent in the world, but for a single or even a double person, uh, not bad at all. All right, the trailer and the tent are all set up. I did not set up the awning because that would just go off into the woods there and I won't end up being over there tonight with the way that this uh, particular pad is set up so not gonna do that but uh, I don't think it's gonna be super necessary anyway tonight we got a fire pit that we can use we got all the lights we got things going on so it should be good oh it's hot though I'm sweating looking forward to it cooling down and uh, looking forward to making dinner I need a cold drink So I got the steaks on the stove. They are cooking up in a nice garlic herb butter. Beef's making mac and cheese because we're adults, but we're also five. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be an awesome dinner. I'm looking forward to it. Dear the Father, we thank you for an amazing, adventurous day and for this food and for this location. With our hearts and our bellies full, we watch the fire die down as we're going to sleep. But we have no idea that the next day will present us with bigger challenges, more delays, and an unexpected payoff. All right, we're doing this. 
And I'm going first. I'm going to be the guinea pig. And I, it feels like a dumb idea, but we're doing it anyway. We're officially overlanders now. Second logs. There you go. There you go. 